This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's Word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. Today we are going to finish up Romans chapter 5. And what an awesome chapter. What an awesome book. That this has been and in the last podcast we left off by uh, we were discussing how man absolutely have, we just blew it we just absolutely blew it man had a perfect relationship with God in the Garden of Eden and then they chose to sin they chose to eat that fruit that God said don't eat and because they ate of that fruit sin entered in and not only did sin enter in but fear entered in that's why Adam and Eve went and hid when they heard God coming through the garden and we learned that how um, that they tried to cover their sin their shame and God had to sacrifice an animal to do so he said there had to be the shedding of innocent blood and he took the the skin of that animal that he sacrificed and and made a covering for their shame and for their sin and so it was not long after that that God banned them uh, from the Garden of Eden. They were now separated from God because of sin. That relationship was never the same. Not until Jesus died on the cross. And, and while we were enemies, while we were sinners, Jesus dies on the cross. He sheds his innocent blood. And because he did so, if we put our faith in Jesus, then that relationship has been restored just like it was in the garden of eden god's wrath has been satisfied through the death and the burial and the resurrection of his son jesus christ so when when god killed that animal in genesis that would be a precursor to what god's going to do for us through Jesus, his very own son, how Jesus is going to die on that cross for our sin. He did die on that cross for our sin. And Paul says that he did this while we were still enemies. Not when we got our lives together. Not when we got everything in order and and, and we're now we're heading in the right direction, so I'm going to go to Jesus now. No. God did this while we were still sinners, while we were enemies. At the right time, Paul says, Christ died for us us and through his sacrifice jesus has reconciled us back to god he has made us friends again with god he has restored that relationship with god once again and now we have uh these promises we have this hope paul's talking about and and we we know that we are on our way to heaven and we're going to when we take our last breath here on this earth we're going to take our first breath into eternity and we can do so with joy and and confidence because of what jesus has done for us on the cross and so what i want to do is finish up chapter five and paul says that when adam sinned sin entered the world and adam's sin brought death So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. And Paul's already uh, talked about this in Romans 3, how we're all sinners and we all need a Savior. But Paul says when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. They had perfect communion with God. God was hanging out with Adam and Eve on a, I don't know, a daily basis. He would show up quite often into the garden. But they had perfect communion with God with God until they ate of that fruit until they sinned they they did exactly what God told them not to do that's what sin is is going against God's word God's standard and so they ate that fruit sin entered in and that sin brought death and what death is is a separation death is a separation it, it, death our soul because this is just an earthly tent we're just renting the tent for a little while uh, this is my, my soul, our, your soul, when we take our last breath and our heart beats for the last time, our soul is going to leave this tent. This earthly tent is going to return to what it was made from, and that's dust. And not, you know, the body's rot. I mean, flesh rots. And, all, and the only thing that's left behind is bones. And over time, I guess they rot too, or, you know, or bugs eat them or whatever. But death 
And every the, in the book, the Bible makes it clear in the book of Hebrews that everybody is going to die. Everybody. That's the only way out of here. We're going to die at some point. And when we die, death is a separation. And so Paul's going to take this this same example and he's going to apply it to how sin separates us from God but Christ brings us back together in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 Paul says for the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death remember wages is something you earn for the wages something that you earned the what you earn from sin is death that's what sin gives us yeah sin is fun for a moment sin is fun for a season but when we live a life of sin without the blood of Jesus Christ it brings death well even even before even besides having the uh, Christ in our lives we're we're all sinners Roman he's already covered that in Romans 3 Romans 3 23 all has sinned and come short of the glory of God there was only one perfect person who did not sin not one time and that's Jesus so we're all sinners and because of sin there has to be this separation and it's death and we're all going out that way from this life and what we have earned because of that sin is death this separation but paul says the get the free gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our lord the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god you know because paul's already made it clear we didn't deserve it we didn't deserve any of this because of God's grace and mercy. He gives it to us in, in His Son, through the death of His Son, through the blood that Jesus shed for us. While we were still enemies, Christ died for us. And so Paul says in verse 13, he says, Yes, people sinned before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not any law to break. People didn't know what sin was because there was no law. The, Paul's already said that the law was given so that we would know what sin is. Verse 14, Still everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit command of God as Adam did. So Adam was given a direct command, Do not eat of that one tree. And yet Adam did exactly what God said not to do, which is what sin is. It's disobedience to God. And so now Adam is a symbol, Paul says, a representation of Christ who is yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, he's not blaming Eve, he's blaming Adam. And Eve is the one that was deceived. Eve is the one that took of the fruit. Eve is the one that took the first bite. Eve is the one who passed it to Adam. But look who God is blaming here. And look who Paul is blaming here. He says it's the, the sin of this one man, not Eve, but Adam, he's blaming the man, brought death to many, and we're still paying the price for Adam's sin to this very day. People are still dying every day. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. So there's this huge difference in what the two have to offer. Sin and salvation. Sin and God's grace. Sin and God's mercy. Sin separates. Paul makes that clear. Sin brings death. Sin separates us from God. We see that in the garden. We see it in our own lives. If we continue to live a life of sin and not being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are still enemies of God. We are still separated from God. That relationship has not been restored. But then we have God's grace and God's mercy through the blood of Jesus Christ who restores that relationship. We are reunited and it feels so good. I don't know if you remember that song or not, but it's, it's old. But we're reunited with God. That relationship is being and has been restored through what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So sin separates, but God's grace and His mercy, it unites. That is the heart of forgiveness. And that's what forgiveness does. Forgiveness, it unites. And unity is the heart of the Father. I want to say that again. Forgiveness unites. And unity is the heart of 
the Father. We see this all throughout the Bible. God longs to have a relationship with his people. He never intended for his people or for anybody, for that matter, uh, for that matter to be separated from him. He always wanted unity. He longed for unity with his people, with us, even today. And that's why that God had to come up with a plan in order to redeem or buy back man. Because God, he knows from the beginning to the end. He, he, he knows the past, he knows the present, and he knows the future. We only know the, the past and the present. God sees it all. And God knew that man was going to blow it. And so he already had a plan in place to fix it. <clears throat> I believe it's in, I can't remember if it's Ephesians 4 or Galatians 4, where it talks about how uh, it was God's eternal purpose. He already had a plan to redeem man, and that was to, to uh, uh, send his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Paul says in verse 16, as a result of God's gracious gift, it's very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. So the results are this. Uh, well, let me, let me back up. Let me reread that again. And the result of God's gracious gift, the result, the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. So in other words, the result of sin, separation. The result of grace is salvation in Christ. Because Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. And so that word result, um, when, when, I, I, when I was younger, much younger, I, I was a very good skateboarder. I was sponsored by a local skate shop. We traveled around to contests, and I would enter these contests, and I skated. I, I was really good for somebody from West Tennessee. And I would watch the other skaters do their run and, uh, you know, then I would do my run and there'd be some more skaters after me. And I would just watch everybody. I, I wanted to, to, you know, see how good they were, see how my competition, you know, even in practice, I would watch them. I just wanted to kind of size them up and see what, you know, what kind of run I needed to put together, what tricks that I needed to do. And then I, and then I would put this plan together and go through my routine and, 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 in the contest and then when everybody had skated we waited for the results we wanted to see where we placed and sometimes i placed first sometimes i placed second or third sometimes i didn't even place at all because i kept falling off my board or wrecking or whatever i just didn't have it that day it happens but with god see th there there is no waiting the, the results are instant. When we come to Jesus Christ and we're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and we're baptized for the remission of our sins and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, boom, right there, Paul says, all of God's promises belong to you. We talked about this in the past couple of podcasts. We already know the results of sin. It brings separation. But we also already know the results of grace and forgiveness. It brings salvation. Sin separates God's forgiveness unites. Here's the crazy part. Why would anybody choose sin? Why would anybody choose to be separated from God instead of being united with God and living for God? And the crazy thing is, people do it all the time. People do it every day. And it's absolutely mind-blowing. And the bad thing is, at least Adam and Eve, they felt some shame. They went and hid behind a tree. We're out parading it all over the, all over the internet, all over social media, all over the news. Naked men and naked women kissing all over each other and dancing around naked as a jaybird in front of little kids and parading it and, 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 and bragging about it. It's sickening. Absolutely sickening. Sin separates. God's forgiveness unites. Paul says in verse 17, For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater, but even greater than sin, Adam's sin, God's uh, wonderful grace is even greater, and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, 
Jesus Christ. And what Paul just said, it's, it's the key. It is the key. For all who receive it. That's the key. For all who receive it. Many reject God at what He has provided for us, and that is salvation. They just continue to reject it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about God's love and how He sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins. They don't care about John 3, 16, 17, and 18, and 19. They don't, they don't want to hear that. They, 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 they're their own God. They want to make their own decision and do their own thing. They don't want to hear about the consequences of their actions and their choices. They just want to do what they want to do. They don't care that God has provided salvation through, their, through His Son, Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit fell on the apostles and, and the church began, Peter preached the first sermon and many heard it. Many heard it. Thousands heard it. Thousands of Jews had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. They were bringing their first fruits to God. And they heard Peter's sermon. Thousands. And the question was asked, what do we got to do to be saved? What do we have to do? We want to be saved. And Peter gives them the answer in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 41. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What have we got to do here? We want to be saved. And Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized, be fully immersed in water, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is unto you, your children, and all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to Himself. And you know what? God is still calling people to this day. He may be calling you right now for salvation. And so Peter uh, goes on to say, or Luke goes on to write in verse 40, uh, and with many other words he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse, this wicked generation. It, would just, it just goes with today's time as well. So then those who had received Peter's word, thousands upon thousands, heard the message, What do we got to do to be saved? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you'll, be, you, you, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thousands upon thousands that were gathered there on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, they heard that message. But this is what Luke writes. So then those who had received his word were baptized. And guess how many there were? He says about 3,000 souls. So thousands upon thousands heard Peter's message, but about 3,000 heard it. And did something about it. They acted upon it. They were baptized. They were fully immersed in water. And about 3,000 souls that they were added to the church. And the church began. And 3,000, it sounds like a lot. But in comparison to how many people heard that message, it's really, it's really not a very big number. But let's move on. In verse 18, Paul says, Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. We're utterly helpless, remember? That's what Paul says. So Adam's one sin, he brings condemnation for everyone. Why? Because it's brought death. It's brought separation. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. That one bite of fruit. I hope it was good, at least. But that one bite of fruit brought so much pain and so much destruction to everybody's life that's ever walked on the face of this earth because it brought sin into the world. But the positive thing about it is through one man, Jesus, God in the flesh, we can have new life and have a relationship with God. And this is how Paul ends chapter 5. Because one person disobeyed God. Talk about Adam and Eve, but he blamed Adam. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. No, I would say all became sinners. But because of one other person obeyed God, because of one other person obeyed God, talking about Jesus, many will be made righteous. God's law was given so, all, so that all people, all people could see how sinful they were. That's why the law was given. There, there was no chance for you and I to follow the law and get it right with God. One person did that, and that was Jesus. And, and he had to do it because if he didn't, he couldn't be the sacrifice for our sins. He couldn't redeem man back to God. 
So the law, Paul says, it was given so that we would know just how sinful we were. Because without the law, he's already made it clear, we wouldn't even know what sin was. We wouldn't even know that we were disobeying God. And death has already come because of Adam and Eve's sin. And so we needed to know what sin was so we can learn to what is pleasing to God and try to live the best life that we can to please God. But even at that, we still got to have a Savior because no matter what we do, no matter how good we are, we're still sinners and we need a Savior. And that's what Paul's saying here. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll read that one more time. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them death, it brought sin brought separation, and it separated us from our relationship with God. Now God's wonderful grace rules instead. God's grace, God's redemption at Christ's expense. God's grace rules instead. Not sin, not the separation, but God's grace rules instead. Giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The only, I'm going to say this in, in closing one more time. The only way that we can have salvation is through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross and putting our faith in him, putting our trust in him, and living for him. Not our works, not our not our the law, not the circ not circumcision, nothing that we can do will earn us a right relationship with God. The only thing that we can do is put our faith in Jesus Christ. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're baptized for the remission of our sins, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, boom, we are automatically in the kingdom. We are automatically given the promises of God, and it brings joy, it brings confidence, and, and we learn to endure when storms come, and we hold to the hand of Jesus when life gets hard and we keep putting one foot in front of the other, I can't remember what Christmas cartoon that is, but it's a song in one of those Christmas cartoons about putting one foot in front of the other. Maybe the, I think it was the elf, the little, uh, little elf on Rudolph, um, talking about putting one foot in front of the other. But that's what we got to do. We got to endure. And we keep holding to the hand of Jesus. And when we take our last breath upon this earth, we take our first breath into eternity and we'll be with Him for eternity. God promises it. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And if we accept that sacrifice that Jesus made on Calvary's cross and He was laid in that tomb for three days and we understand that He came out of that tomb alive three days later, and he sent it back to the Father 40 days later. And he is sitting at the place of authority. And he's making intercession for those who put their faith and trust in him. We're going to be okay. But the question is, you know, well, before we get to the question, look around at what's going on in this, in this world. It's getting worse and worse every day. And it's like on a downhill slippery slope. And it is going fast. It's going to hell in a handbasket rapidly the only hope that we have is Jesus Christ and so my question to you is are you going to put your trust in yourself and think that you can get yourself out of this because the only way out of here is going to be death and there's no way that you can save yourself no matter what you do you and I we have to have a savior and his name is Jesus are you willing to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ today if I can help you do that, please contact me at thegrounditpodcast at gmail.com or you can text me at the number that is at the outro of this podcast. If you do, uh, if you have already made that decision, you have put your faith in Christ Jesus, by all means, please share Christ with those that you know that are lost, your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, whoever it is, please tell them about this hope that you have about this great 
and wonderful Savior who died in our place so that we could have life and so that our relationship with God could be restored so that they too can make that decision to follow Christ or reject Christ. Thank you for listening today. I can't wait to study Romans chapter 6 with you in the upcoming podcast. Thank you for sharing the Grinded Podcast with your friends, your family, your co-workers because when you're sharing the the Grinded Podcast, you are sharing Christ. And when you share Christ, you're giving people the opportunity to know Christ, to grow closer to Christ, and to live for Christ. So thank you for doing that. God bless you. Keep grinding. Thanks for listening to The Grounded Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegroundedpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865-418-2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, leave us a five-star review, but most importantly, share The Grounded Podcast with a friend. God bless you and remember, keep grinding.